Thank you. Yeah, I need a ma need a uh, need a motion to read. Mr. Re Chairman, I'll make okay. a motion to go back into open session. Second. Second. Okay. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. Okay, we are back in session. Uh, okay. Um, you want to? Uh, uh, we'll start out with the uh, me meeting of March the 9th, uh, St. Charles County Council meeting. We'll start off with the invocation, which will be given by Steve Flores from First Assembly Church, uh, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance, uh, uh, conducted by Mike Elam. Okay. Please stand. If we can all bow our heads, please. Heavenly Father, we come to you in Jesus' name, thanking you for the religious freedoms that we hold dear in our hearts in our beloved country. Holy Spirit, we humbly ask for you and for your divine wisdom in every area of our leadership, not only within our responsibilities in this great city of St. Charles, but also in our leadership at home. We pray for protection against any sickness or diseases or dangers within our city, and we ask for your angels as your protection over every resident that calls this town their home. We also pray for a spirit of unity in our city so we may become a model of brotherly love and servanthood to the surrounding communities near us. And Father, I speak peace in Jesus' name over our city, and I pray for divine favor and success over every leader and resident in the city of St. Charles. Give us a righteous desire to do what is right in your eyes. In Jesus' name, and we all sit together. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please call the roll. Councilmember Joe Cronin. Here. Councilmember Joe Brazel. Here. Councilmember Mike Elam. Here. Councilmember Terry Hollander. Here. Councilmember Dave Hammond. Here. Councilmember Nancy Schneider. Here. Councilmember John White. Here. Okay. Uh, first on the agenda tonight is a public hearing on the license renewal for the Calhoun Ferry Company. Is there anyone here to comment on that? Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, members of the County Council. My name is Arnie C. A.C. Dinoff, County Public Advocate and Resident. And as I testify every year before the County Council, um, I wish that we would get in the spirit of helping our neighbors in a spirit of intergovernmental relations, building bridges, building partnerships. Grafton Ferry serves predominantly the majority of St. Charles County residents who want quicker, faster, and efficient uh, access and to save the environment by cutting down on traffic and cutting down on their gasoline consumption. This link between St. Charles County and Grafton is very necessary. It has to do with commerce and economic development. I ask, if I, as I've asked in the previous years, that the county, county council entertain waiving the fee, such as you do for liquor licenses for the city of St. Charles, Parks and Recreation, and their general uh, uh, community center, community uh, events held at the uh, City Hall for various charity events. I ask that you do the same for the City of Grafton and that you waive uh, the fee. As we all know, we're all consumers and the fee that you charge for this ferry license will be passed on to us, the consumer. For those reasons, for the fifth year in a row, I'm asking the County Council in a spirit of uh, intergovernmental relations and getting along with our neighbors on the Illinois side of the river that you waive the fee entirely. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Okay, thank you. Uh, anyone else to uh, testify on the uh, renewal of the Calhoun Ferry license? Okay. Seeing none, uh, we will uh, follow this up with public comments. Just a reminder, if you uh, are going to speak, to fill out a speaker's card and that we will limit your uh, uh, comments to three minutes. And if there's enough uh, people interested in the same subject, it'll be three, uh, three, four, and three against alternating on the particular subject. Okay, Claire. Um, concerning Bill 4816, Renee Lawrence.
Good evening, Renee Lawrence with Missouri American Water. Um, on behalf of Bill 4816 that's currently tabled, I wanted to provide this evening um, an update of where we stand and what we're hoping to continue to work on uh, for council and for county officers. Um, as we shared in our original presentation, we have the service area for um, St. Charles County. One of the questions that was asked to us was to hone in on the um, who benefits the most from having the elevated water storage tank at 530 Canals Road location. So we've done that and we've got a, uh, here's a complete service area which includes all of the St. Charles District service area for Missouri American Water which encompasses the entire 30,500 people. And um, this shows the communities that benefit and the fire uh, districts that receive resources from a water standpoint and a pressure standpoint uh, for the service area. When it comes to having the tank at 530 Canals Road, um, we, asked, we were asked to zone in on who benefits the most from that immediate location. And this second slide here shows you that the shaded area to the west side of the, of the service area is the area that benefits the most. As you can see in this map, we have three storage facilities on the eastern side of the district. However, there are no storage facilities on the western side of the service area. So with that in mind, the Green Star is the place where 530 Canal is. That tank, that two million gallons of water, elevated storage will help support the pressure in that area. So with that in mind, one of the things we have to realize is St. Charles County is developing. We've got some developers, Cove developers, that's planning to do a mixed multi-use um, development. Uh, we met with them last week. In the number of units that they're supplying, they're in this same area here to the western side, and they would be supported by this tank. Um, additional to supporting by that tank, we also met with the city of Weldon Springs and spoke with them about their development needs and their infrastructure needs. And again, down in this region here, the tank is supported in that current location. And having the tank in this area, when <coughs> high peak and high demand usage comes across, that flow across the district, because of the way the water comes in from our St. Louis County plant, central plant, all of that volume, that, attention, that additional pressure support and volume support is, can be met with the, that tank being placed where it is. Again, it's the highest point in the district service area, and it supports these regions to the north and to the south on the western side of the service area. And as I shared, when it came to support, we got O'Fallon letter support from O'Fallon Fire District. We've gotten letters from the city of Cottleville, and we've also gotten letters from, from Weldon Springs. So those are areas where we've talked about infrastructure support, where we've gotten additional support. We're still working on getting the um, information that was asked for in terms of infrastructure improvements and the cost of that. And we hope to be able to continue to provide that to you. And just so you know, 80 to 100 gallons per day is what a user uses. If you look at the cold development, which potentially could be 500 people, this tank will support that and allow for the infrastructure to um, meet the demands as need on a daily basis in the peak time of the year. So if there's any questions, okay. I'm willing to answer those. Yes, sir. I, I just, uh, just a simple request. Yes, sir. Could that information you just posted, would you make sure that it gets the county council secretaries and also that maybe it's posted on our, D, our council packet so the public can access it for the next meeting? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. I can, I can leave these copies right here with her. Thank you. Thank, right. you Thank you very much. Claire? Donna Bleekert. Donna. After seeing our previous presentation, you know, um, this is my first meeting I've attended. Um, for the Bill 4816 that's being proposed, I am a resident in the Berkshire Downs subdivision, and I speak up for a lot of the residents there that are opposing this construction. You know, I realize that that may be the highest site, but do, is there another site that's 
just below that that they can consider rather than in a heavily residential area because my understanding is that it could impact my property value and um, I I'm greatly concerned about that um, I thought that it was going to be a 40-foot tower and now then is it going to be 140 feet or greater you know that's a concern too uh, I also heard that it was going to be a million gallons of water. Now then I just heard two million gallons. So, you know, if there was a structural integrity to that partic particular tower, you know, could that uh, impact our homes, create a flood, something, you know, that would impair it in some way. So um, that was uh, my concerns, my property value. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Drew Weber. <laughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen of the council, Mr. County Executive and County Staff. Uh, my name is Drew Weber with Hamilton Weber, and I'm here uh, also on behalf of Missouri American Water. As a preliminary comment, I can go ahead and email uh, copies also of all those uh, documents over to county staff for distribution to the council. Uh, and I want to talk to uh, the uh, to and maybe about some of the neighbors and some of the neighbors' concerns. Uh, Missouri American Water is concerned about being a good neighbor to the residents and businesses uh, in its service area and nearby. Uh, so we are uh, trying to host a meeting with the residents, and that's one reason we asked uh, Council Member Elam if we could table the bill tonight, is to host a meeting with the residents to kind of address uh, some of their concerns. Uh, and that's really the whole reason for going through this process is to be neighborly and try and work through some of these concerns and talk through some of the issues. Uh, it, you know, we hear a lot about the effect on property values, and and that is really one of the reasons for the tower, right? I mean, if, if you don't have enough water, then your property is not going to have much value if you have no water, right? Uh, and the... I know there's also some concern that, well, this tower is at the edge and is closer to people served by other water districts. But it, the public utilities are almost like a chain, right? They're uh, as only as strong as the weakest link. And there's so much interconnectedness among these water utilities. And in fact, the public water supply district right now is using water from Missouri American Water because they're doing repairs on some of their own facilities. And so it's important to have uh, modern and up-to-date facilities and capacity as well uh, for the growing parts of the county and then to serve existing residents also. Uh, so uh, again, this is all part of the process and to try and educate the neighbors and the public and so we hope to continue doing that uh, with an eye to coming back at the end of the month. So um, I'm happy to send you copies of everything that we have, uh, like you asked Councilmember Cronin, and then um, be happy to answer any questions. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Mr. Weber. Pam Siddle. Hi, I'm Pam Siddle. I'm also a Berkshire Downs resident. Um, I'm listening to a lot of what their point is about how people need the water. That has never been our issue. We're not arguing that their customers do not need the water pressure or the water. What we are arguing is the hype. That's all this has been about. We need them to do it at a 40-foot maximum, as everybody was requested, and that's the ordinance. We all agreed to it. So we're just asking, you can build it. Build your 40-foot. We're good with that. So we don't understand why the issue is turning to, well, everybody needs that. We're not saying they don't. So in our, option, in our views, their option is build your 40-foot tank there or find an additional place to do that. That's and because it's affecting us and, and our, like everybody's saying, the property values. And it's something that um, I just think that um, they should have to deal with because that they've had their, their property for 30 years. They knew all along it was a 40-foot regulation. That's all I've got. Thank you, ma'am. Claire? Owen Peters? Yes. 
Good evening, Council. Uh, my name is Owen Peters, and I live in St. Charles County. I've been living there for 54 years, so I'm a longtime resident. And uh, I, in June 30th, I fell and broke my hip. <coughs> Called the emergency, and they, the St. Charles Fire Department hauled me to the hospital. On the way, they gave me fentanyl. I requested morphine, but they gave me fentanyl. And I almost d died. I thought I was going to die on the way to the hospital, but I didn't die, and I had the operation. But uh, I, under I talked to the fire chief, George Sheets, and he uh, supported using fentanyl. I, and I talked to the city council, and I just explained to them, you know, that this is a very dangerous drug. It's a synthetic drug as opposed to morphine, which is a natural drug. Anyway, uh, I, I understand the St. Charles County Ambulance District also uses fentanyl. So I, I think you ought to think about that and contact them to see if they do use it and recommend they don't use it anymore. Because somebody dies, it's going to be a big burden on the county to pay the bill, the insurance bill. Now, the other thing I wanted to mention is that I applied for a seat at the St. Charles County, Central County Fire and Rescue District. And I went there, and they said, well, the fee now is $50. It used to be 10 So I still was going to file, because the last day to, to file. Then I talked to uh, Chief Dan Aubuchon, and he told me that if I filed, the district would be charged $40,000 just for me filing. So I said, well, that's pretty strange. I contacted the, the county executive, and he bumped me over to the director of elections, and I talked to the director of elections. And he said that, well, because they, they, well, the person who filed uh, unopposed, that's fine. That's, then he said, if you file, that's a competition. And you have to pay, the district has to pay 10% of the overall cost of the election, which is estimated at $40,000. So that'd be $10,000 that they'd have to pay. I think that's wrong, gentlemen and lady. And you ought to think about that and see if you can do something about that. Now, I did contact my representative in 65th District, Tom Hannigan, and wrote to him. I haven't heard back from him. I don't know if it has to be a state thing or a county thing or whatever. And one more thing I have to mention. There's a little plot of ground on 5th Street, north, right behind the uh, Boys and Girls Club. It's owned by the county. I contacted Steve Elman about it. Just a little patch of ground within the city. Why don't you just deed it to the city? It's just a little piece of gravel, you know, it's ugly. So uh, you, ought to, you ought to do something about that. Thank you for listening to me. Thank you. Claire? Concerning Bill 4822, Rick Ream. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Council mem members, my name is Rick Reed. And uh, I'm here uh, for that variance for the uh, storage facility on North 94, 3300. I am the owner of Dry Dock Marine and RV Storage at the facility right next door to this proposed development. I'm here this evening to raise some important questions for myself and many county and city citizens in the view of this property regarding the variance appeal for this development. First of all, I'm not here to beat up on Mr. Dyer and Mr. Weiss, but we've all driven past their existing storage facility they own and manage at North Highway 94 and would, and would have to ask themselves, is this what I'd want to see when I leave my house or next to my business? I don't know if any of you on the council had the opportunity to view the existing property, but it was not, it was not very well kept. There was overgrown weeds, grass, miscellaneous trash, derelict trailers, and derelict vehicles stored there. I've taken some photographs for you to view 
of the facility before they, how would they say, vigorously started cleaning it up this past weekend prior to this meeting. My question is, why did it take 20 years to do it? I'd like to tell you a little about myself. I spent the last 18 years at my business. I built it from the ground up. Well, nor it cost me well north of a half a million dollars to develop this piece of property. I've also maintained the highway, if you're familiar with that area down to St. Charles Boat and Motor, and all the way up to their proposed driveway for the last 18 years and along Haunting Road. But it seems that this corridor, I guess I would say, it's always been treated like the redheaded stepchild of St. Charles County and the city. It seems like, well, you know what? We don't put, want to put it over on Newtown Boulevard. Let's put it on North 94. It's always been that way. Whether good intentions or bad, it seems like it's always been that way. I designed and built my first storage lot on 94, and I built several other ones down on Haunting Road. I know a little bit about developing storage lots. I've also noticed some flaws in the design of this, this proposed storage lot, and uh, it has some questions which I think you have on your cover page. This variance issue to allow a setback to be reduced. By allowing this, the utility companies such as AT&T, Ameren, St. Charles City, Water, Sewer, um, it'd make that difficult for them to access their power lines, sewer lines, with that variance being so far up to the ditch. Now, I am in the city, but I was in the county, and I followed the rules. Oh, is that three months? Yeah, three sure is, man. That's oh, I'm sorry. It's, then. it's all right. Can I keep going? I just give me, you can give about 15 seconds to wrap okay. it up here. Then I'll go, I'll get to the part, end of the part here. Well, that was a quick three minutes. <laughs> In closing, I would like to reiterate that I'm not against development, but I do deeply care about the north side of St. Charles and want the best for, for its future and to keep the property values of the surrounding areas to this proposed project. Thousands of county citizens, cyclists, and tourists use this corridor every day. Hundreds of new homes are building as we speak. I just find it hard to understand that the need to build on this property at this point when Mr. Dyer has 43 existing acres at his existing site to work on and build out before he'd have to do this. Thank you, sir. Okay. Lauren Tweeth. Hello, my name's Lawrence Weiss. <laughs> I live in St. John, St. Louis County. Um, I'd like to thank the council and all the residents for showing up tonight. Um, Mr. Dyer and I are partners in the property on the subject property on Highway 94. Uh, we're here tonight to discuss a zoning setback. Prior to this meeting, as you well know, we were denied a setback change by the zoning board. In that meeting, we were asking for a 10-foot setback from the 35-foot setback requirement. At this time, we'd like to amend that setback request to, from 10 feet to 20 feet, which would match our, our neighbor, Mr. Ream, to the south. Uh, Rick Ream, who was at the last zoning meeting, uh, made it more than clear that he did not like the 10-foot request, but said he would be behind us at the 20-foot. Mr. Dyer and myself can more than understand his position. That being said, we are not looking for an unfair advantage, only thing, only trying to make sure that to use the best, to use our land best use, is best use. Due to the narrowness of the front lot, because of the creek that runs through the property, the 25-foot bank setback requirement by the county, this creek basin makes up approximately 1.35 acres of our land. And then if we use the 35-foot front setback, that comes to almost a half an acre of this land. This half acre can counts towards our 18% allowable fill, as does the 25-foot setback of the bank on either side of the creek. This is land that we own and cannot use, however, pay the same tax rates for as the rest of the land, nor will we be able to generate any revenue off of this land. If you allow us to move from the 35-foot setback to 20 feet, we would be even with Mr. Reams' fence. This would keep a nice balance along the 94 corridor and allow us to gain use of approximately two-tenths of an acre of our narrow front lot. That's 15 feet across the front of our front lot. As pointed out by Mr. Ream in the zoning meeting, we have plenty of usable land on the other side of the creek. This is true, however, this land is not ready to use as whereas the front lot will be able to be put to use in short order. 
With the rear lot being developed simultaneously, this will allow us to gain, begin collecting revenue from the land from rental of the front lot. Mr. Dyer and myself decided that the front lot is not where we would like to care to park tractor trailers due to, the, due to the accessibility and size of the lot. However, RVs, boats, and small trailers as, uh, that are the same as Mr. Reams' lot would fit fine and not be so affront to visitors and residents of the corridor. This is where I'd like to take a minute to address the comments made in the zoning meeting that didn't pertain to this new project that seemed to have gotten people stirred up. These comments were regarding another property owned by Mr. Dyer a little further north on 94, regarding the conditions at this property. These comments were accompanied by photos, which we didn't get to see until later, um, which have apparently made the rounds to some of our neighbors. When these complaints were made in the zoning meeting, Mr. Dyer's only comment was, he's not wrong. That being said, the subject of these photos were items that were already on our list to be taken care of. Mr. Dyer is not an absentee landowner, nor is he receiving, <coughs> has he received any warnings or summonses from the county. Quite the sir, opposite. Sir, you're, you're two, you're three minutes. Yeah, well, he kept going. Well, I'll, I give you, I'll give you 15 seconds to finish up here. Okay. We're looking forward to getting this project taken care of. We've been working on it for six months. We've spent a lot of money and time on this project, and yet we haven't been able to do anything physically on the land. Okay, if you look at Mr. Dyer's current property, it's clean. It's always, the trash has been kept, picked up. We had a problem tenant. He's been dealt with. The, the, everything Thanks. has been cleaned up. Thank you, sir. You know, we, we're just looking forward to getting this job done. I you know? I understand. Being Thanks. a good neighbor for the county. We do have, uh, a, a, a picture of what the it would look like with the 20 foot setback. Call, yeah, yeah, we, we can call we, you up when yeah, we get to yeah, the, we'll get the bill. This we can just for you. public comment. Okay. okay, we'll discuss the All bill right. when we get to it. Mary Ann Ohms. Good evening, Mary Ann Ohms. I live over on 222 North Fourth, but I'm on the City Council for Ward One, and I just learned about this um, this um, issue last night, and so I'm kind of a <laughs> Um, crash course here. Uh, I understand that um, uh, what is that issue is the on appeal here is the the uh, denial of a uh, variance commission's um, um, well the request for a 35 foot setback requirement to 10 feet. And uh, prior to coming here, I was aware of the uh, proposed amendment to the uh, 20 foot setback to match the neighboring business. Um, it's good to hear that the proposed use is not going to be semi trucks. Um, um, with shipping containers and um, some of the other large devices, uh, semi-trailers certainly do not want that on in the front parcel uh, of that property. Um, I have concerns um, because Mo 94 is evolving. We've got a lot of homes building up there. There are, was a subdivision originally proposed behind um, a, a Stable Ridge at the original entryway into Newtown behind Silver Trail. So that would be very in very close proximity to the um, um, to this parcel. That did not go through um, after the uh, site plan had been introduced at the, the city council. But still, we also have a, a park being developed there. We have a high school being developed there. And as a former member of the park board and current liaison to the park board, we certainly um, we are interested in, in getting tournaments to come out there. You're going to have people visiting there, and we don't want something unsightly along this county road, um, which is essentially, we see it also as city road. Um, I don't know if, um, since I didn't have an opportunity to really study this issue, um, I don't know if you can put conditions similar to like a conditional use. And I would, if, if you're going to approve the 20 foot setback, I, I'm, I'm opposed to re re reducing it to 10 foot. If you are going to go the route and agree to the 20 foot to match the uh, neighboring property, there should be conditions put in place um, to this variance to no, uh, not allowing any semi-trucks, shipping containers, um, and cargo trailers in the front parcel. Uh, we got to be careful because the variance will run with the land. I learned that when I was on the board of adjustment for the city. I've kind of been in front of these boards quite a bit. So um, we have to, as I said, the variance will run with the land. There's not going to be any going back. So uh, I think you know what my opinion is here. Um, if there is a, a, any concessions here, there's got to be some condition to keep the, this, this, this roadway 
as attractive as what we can. Uh, certainly everybody wants somebody to have the highest use of their property, but however, if this, this prop, there's nothing unique about this property when it was, my understanding, the, the, it was rezoned at the uh, request of the property owner and not initiated at the council. So what is unique about this property? Nothing has changed, just the zoning. Okay, so thank, thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Gary Heineke. My name is Gary Heineke, and I live up on Apricot Drive. I moved in there in the early 1970s. And I, I know when I come out of my subdivision to get on 94, I look at this one lot that's up there, it's filled full of tractor trailer vans, and it looks terrible. And I, I don't really want to look at another one when I come out of my uh, street again, further on, closer on down. Uh, it's right across from Pile House Shopping Center there. And that other one is just it's unsightly. And I think it does damage property values. So that's not all I have to say about that. I'm quick. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Jerry Prinster. Good evening. I'm Jerry Prinster. I live at 3200 Clarence, which is about a block and a half from this site. I'm also the chairman of the Planning and Zoning Board of Adjustment, and we heard this case, and we went strictly by the guidelines from the county, and there are four criteria that they must meet, all four of these four, and they met none. So, it, it, I, you know, I don't want to take Gary's three minutes and my three minutes, but I do want you to know that, that the criteria we looked at very carefully discussed it with uh, both Mr. Dyer and his engineer, and there's plenty of room for them to do what they want to do away from the highway. Uh, Rick made the comment about just trying to keep this corridor in, so did Marianne, trying to keep this corridor a little more presentable than it is. It's sort of an entrance to St. Charles if you're coming from the north. And in less than three minutes, I'm out of here. Thank you. Thank you, sir. <laughs> William Kish. Good evening. My name's my name's William Kish. I live on um, uh, Silver Trail Drive. I got a letter in August saying I lived within 1,000 feet of the property. I have not heard anything back since then. I called before the uh, meeting on the 21st of August, and they said it was just a matter of uh, they were rezoning so they could sell the property and, and make it more attractive for somebody to buy. And since then, I've received no other emails or or letters, and I've got nothing. You know, there's no been no signage put out front there saying hey be aware that there's gonna be something happening here. So I'm glad that Rick over here came by the other day and told us about this meeting. Uh, I went by for Saturday or Sunday and took some more pictures and um, uh, I went up the street, up 94 and turned around and came back. And um, like I stopped at the entrance and you can look back into the, that existing property up the street. I mean, it is, you, it's just a junkyard. I mean, it's just a disaster. And I, I would not like to see that same disaster move closer to Twillman, towards the entrance to uh, uh, Stable Manor and Saddle Ridge and everything. Uh, and I think that if you go back in, into the, where the junkyard is, back along the river, you'll see they were forced to put a fence up. It, they got a big white fence up to block the, uh, the view of the junkyard. I think this property, both these properties, need something similar to block the view and make sure nobody gets to see into those areas. Thank you. Thank you. Regarding Bill 4815, Dale Bax. Good evening, my name is Dale Bax. I'm with Bax Engineering. We're located at 221 Point West Boulevard, St. Charles, Missouri, here for bill number 4815. We're asking this bill to be removed off the table this evening, discussed and voted on um, for South Point Estates. It's located at the cor southwest corner of South Point Prairie Road and Miners Hagen Road. Um, 
The developer is Bill McNair. He's owned the property since 2002, South Miners Land Development, LLC. So that gives you an idea where we're at on the, in the county. This particular layout here is our proposed development of 91.98 acres. We're asking for rezoning this evening from Agricultural A to an RR zoning. Um, we're proposing 28 uh, single-family three-acre lots. All of those three-acre lots will be served by a private septic system and private wells. The access will be from Miners Hagen Road. We'll be building a, a, an approved St. Charles County um, highway uh, entrance. We have three natural water courses on this tract. We are just going to be disturbing one very slightly to get our road system through here. I'm going to point to it right now. That is the only uh, disturbed area of any natural water course that we're going to put, uh, do to the project. We're clearing 0 0.30 acres of trees at that same location. That's the only trees that will be cleared off of this site by this land developer. Um, we would like the development to remain as natural as possible. It's a beautiful piece of ground. We certainly want to keep it that way. And with that being said, we would certainly like to follow all the rules and regulations that are currently imposed for design standards of a three-acre lot subdivision for this evening. So I think we'll be up a little bit later on if there's any further questions at that time. We'll certainly be here to answer those questions for you. Thank you, sir. Bill McNair. <clears throat> Good evening, everyone. Uh, I want to thank you for your time here tonight. Uh, as stated by Mr. Bax, I am the owner of the property. I've owned it for about 18 years and a um, longtime resident of the area. I've been here since 1965. Um, I think I've, I've kind of made that known in past meetings. So, um, you know, I grew up on a farm of over 200 acres. So I understand the ruralness of the area and, and want to keep it that way. Um, and I've been downstream of some pretty aggressive developments, four houses an acre, <clears throat> right next door to the 200 acres I grew up on. So I understand that, I get that, um, and, and I take that stuff very seriously. I suspect most of you, if you're like me, you, you've had kids, you've raised them, or, and you maybe even have grandkids now. Um, you know, one of, one of the challenges that, that we all face is keeping our kids busy nowadays. And when they live in these high density subdivisions, four houses an acre, if you ask me, that's, that's really no way to grow up. Uh, most people have to do it that way, but they, you, it's hard to find chores for these kids. It's hard to find things for them to do. A lot of them sit in the house all day and they play on the internet and they hardly go outside. I raised my family on three acres. And so I know a little, little something about it. Uh, the kids loved it, we loved it. It provides a lot of, a lot of good things uh, for raising kids. And, and still gives them an opportunity to be part of a community, have friends and neighbors like they would in, in, in a normal neighborhood, just not quite as high density. So that's, that's the main reason I, I wanna do it this way. Um, I, I know the, you know the neighbors are uncomfortable with, with the situation. Um, you know, I understand that. I've been a neighbors to development as well. Um, most, most of the people that live in this area, about 60% of the, the parcels of land out there are already on three acres. So this is not a new concept to the area. This would not be something unique in asking these people to take in a higher density than what they're used to. Um, so uh, even a lot of people, I know there's a petition going around, about 60% of the people on the petition are, are also living on three acres. So uh, I don't think there's ever been a development where you come in and the neighbors are gonna approve it or like it if it's other houses next to them. They just, they just don't like change, <clears throat> I understand. Um, unfortunately, this is a, St. Charles County is one of the fastest growing counties in the state. I don't know where it ranks exactly, but it's, it's pretty rapid. And especially in this area, out west in the Wentzville orbit out there, it's, it's growing pretty rapidly. And this piece of ground is really sitting in that orbit. I mean, it's not in the Wentzville city limits, but this is also not New Melly. It's, it's not Augusta. So I, I, I think that this project would provide some sort of a firewall for future development from the city and, and might help in that perspective, you know, if the neighbors would consider that. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Brad Goss. Mr. 
Mr. Chairman, members of the Council, my name is Brad Goss, 120 South Central. I represent uh, Bill McNair, uh, who was just before you speaking on connection with the rezoning of his property on Minor Shogun Road. Um, as you know, uh, the Planning Department recommended in favor uh, of this rezoning and the Planning and Zoning Commission, which I think is significant, after a public hearing also uh, voted in favor and recommended approval. Uh, I've put on the uh, uh, screen the future land use uh, map uh, from the Master 2013. 30 uh, master plan, which was approved by this council uh, and the commission roughly over a year ago after a lengthy process. Uh, and Mr. McNair's property, uh, which is uh, zoned, uh, which in this plan is for rural residential, consistent with the zoning that we're asking for, uh, is the very northern portion uh, of that uh, area. Uh, in fact, uh, if you were to cross Minor Shagan Road, you'd be in a one to four units per acre recommendation under your master plan. So it's less than a baseball throw and you're across the street and you're in that incredibly more dense area. Um, the, I think there are reasons for that. One of which is if you look at this map, it's from your comprehensive plan again. Uh, the Wentzville um, growth area goes down to Minor Shagan Road. Again, we're just across the street. And so I think one of the things that people were thinking about in this council was this area is different. Uh, it's going to abut Wentzville. We need a buffer. This provides a buffer with the three acre lots, but it's not the same as the southern part of this county, which is the wine country. Those need larger lots. This is not the same kind of property. When you look at the transportation corridor, we're literally uh, that blue line takes you to Highway N. It takes you two minutes, according to Google, to get to Highway N. It is nothing. And we're on the major east-west corridor uh, for St. Charles County. Uh, this map, again, comes from your 2030 master plan. We are surrounded by all of the improvements uh, and road ex uh, extensions and improvements that are going to happen in this county. Highway N, Buckner Road, we're at the nexus of all of that. So again, it's reasonable to ask for a three-acre uh, lot uh, rezoning. Finally, topography, this map again comes from your 2030 master plan. Uh, we are in an area on our property where the topography is significantly different from the southern part of the county. If you look at the slopes on that map, the yellow and the red slopes, that's in the southern part of the county, those are a 30% slope as much as 40% slope. Our property, 0 to 6%, 6 to 10%. It's a gentle field. And that's another reason why on the master plan, this council chose to change this to a three acre lot uh, zoning or classification. This was something that Mr. McNair relied on. He made his application because this council gave him that direction. So to ask for support of this tonight, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Goss. Claire? Concerning Bill 4827, Ryan Burris. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here to speak with you on uh, Bill 4827. Uh, we ask that you pass this proposed bill to amend the current subdivision plat ordinances that cripple families who wish to be part of a small town life, take part in family owned ground, or just wish to fulfill dreams of owning a piece of property, building a home, and raising a family. Uh, the current processes, which might make sense in some areas, hold no weight in rural areas and disable families from using their one true asset which or with excessive ordinances in place. Um, my story, which is not unique, um, in this case, I am a small town raised young man, I guess, if you want to go that way. But uh, the raised in a small town, this is uh, my family's farm. Uh, we sold off, there was four acres that were platted, and it's uh, already serviceable. It's got a road, electric, everything's already there. But um, due to the ordinances that are now in place, it has completely crippled all of us to where the fixing of the road, which bears no, has no logical sense in this particular situation, um, it, the, the expense is more than what the ground is even practically worth. So none of that was known going in by the buyers or sellers. So it's completely crippled the whole thing. It's more like a um, deadlock with the ground. It's, a, it's 
landlocked and there be I couldn't really sell it and I can't really build on it now because of the ordinances that are in place. So um, I know many people in the county have heard complain about this particular um, ordinance and I, I ask tonight that you uh, keep that in mind and possibly amending that. I feel that this amendment uh, only enables developers to come into a situation like this. Being that this is zoned for five acre lots, I don't know why we'd want to enable a developer to enable that or to, to develop that. So in this case, um, there's a serviceable road, five acre lots, everything is set up the way it should be. The culvert and everything at the top is on a runoff at the top of the hill. There's no water that sits on it. The uh, Freemuth Road, I've counted, there's 23 roads that touch this county road and they're all gravel. So why would we start with this one as opposed to any of the other ones? Um, either way, that, that's uh, neither here nor there, but the, uh, just keep all that in mind. With, uh, with the new uh, amendment or with the new bill being passed, uh, I believe it would free up, uh, it would enable families to live or retain the ground that they, they cherish versus allowing developers to come in with the big bucks and develop the ground. So on that note, I just want to let you guys know that this, uh, this, this family ground is kind of the heart, it's the heartbeat of my family, and it's been in my family for over half a century, and I would not want to have to break it up or sell it off to strangers due to ordinances that bear no, there's no logical sense behind any of it for this particular situation, as well as many situations surrounding that part, portion of St. Charles County, which that I'd be located in St. Paul, Missouri. So okay. on that note, uh, any questions? We could ask you questions when the bill comes up okay. later on in the meeting. All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much for your time. Don't forget your map. Oh. Arnie Dinoff. Thank you very much, uh, members of the County Council. My name is Arnie C. Dinoff, public advocate and resident. And just for the record, reflect that Mr. Brazel once again exited the council chambers when I speak about important county business. Number one is resolution 20-01, recovery zone bonds, 2010 series. It's a refinancing. I'd like some type of update from the county executive exactly what that means, because I've never heard of that term. Number two, I ask that you uphold the decision of the Board of Zoning Adjustment. These citizens follow the code and do an outstanding job. Bill number 4822 should be affirmed. Bills number 4800 and bill number 4816, which are uh, tabled, also should be affirmed as these people put in a lot of time, effort, and resources. Um, they made some really fine decisions. The public health director, uh, public health and environment director, Demetrius, are we ready for the coronavirus? St. Louis County, as we all heard, has uh, some potential problems. So is it gonna m migrate over to St. Charles County? And can we please have an update? About four years ago, an assistant county counselor wanted to see Bernie Sanders at the Family Arena in 2016. Dave Todd and Chris Hunt of the County Police Department moved this, county counsel, this assistant county counselor with lights and signers to the Family Arena uh, so she could see Bernie Sanders. This is not a good steward of county police resources, and I hope the presidential candidates come this year that we don't use police resources to move county councilor staff to see somebody. Airport purchase, the county executive wants to buy St. Louis Airport. Where are we gonna come up with the billions of dollars to fund that? Where is the 115 to $155 million for the county jail gonna come from? I ask that we look at some transparency, that we build a centralized jail in the central region of the county and not put the money in an already existing building. I'm asking, seeking, and begging residents to run for county, 14 township positions, state rep, and one state senator. Um, we walk two and four of the county council are up for re-election. Uh, county council district has Patty York, who's gonna take on Ms. Schneider. Uh, the county council gets uh, $18,750 salary, full medical benefits, dental, eye care, a full pension, mileage, expenses, two staff members, and a cell phone. Uh, residents deserve competition, fairness, and honesty. I said at the last meeting that the county age for county, count, uh, county council was 25. I looked at the county charter and it's actually 21. 
The filing fee for county councilor, state representative, and other offices is $50 to file with the declaration of candidacy with the Board of Elections, and I'll sum it right up. The final deadline is Tuesday, March 31st by 5 p.m. It's the best part-time job in America, plus serving your county. If you need more information, please contact me. My email address is A-R-N-I-E-D-I-E-N-O-F-F at yahoo.com, or my phone number is 314-440-9000. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Neal. I have no more speaker cards. No more speakers, okay. Uh, next on the agenda is a oral report from the county executive. Director of Health, Dimitri, is going to go ahead and give you an update as he did last meeting. Okay. Mr. Chair, members of the council, good evening. Uh, the COVID-19 outbreak has been working its way around the globe. We're now at more than 110,000 cases worldwide, over 300 in the United States. And um, I want to put that 300 in perspective to you. Two weeks ago, Italy had 300 cases, and they closed their entire country today. Um, there has been one travel-related case in the metropolitan area, and it is the only case in New Mexico to date, or excuse me, in Missouri to date. <laughs> I worked for New Mexico for a long time. <laughs> and, and Councilman, he's also been working nonstop through the weekend. So yes. we, he worked all day yesterday. Um, in response to this case, we have uh, moved our enhanced monitoring and a daily meeting of the public health team to activating our um, incident command structure and are now operating out of the um, emergency response center. Um, we are collaborating with the CDC, the Missouri Department of Health and Senior Services, and other local public health authorities. Um, we are investigating the potential cases, monitoring the outbreak, and assisting with testing as it's necessary. Um, we have not seen this type of epidemic in generations, and it is incumbent upon everyone to calmly plan and modify individual behavior to help protect the vulnerable people among us against the spread of this disease. Um, I want to remind everybody that they should be frequently washing their hands for at least 20 seconds with soap and water. And an alternative is the use of an alcohol-based hand sanitizer of at least 60 to 95% alcohol. Um, you should especially wash your hands after touching <coughs> commonly touched surfaces like elevator buttons, handrails, lecterns. Avoid touching your face. This is a, a habit that's very hard for all of us to break, so call on the people who look at you to remind you to stop touching your face. Um, and if you are sick, stay home. Create a barrier when you do have to touch surfaces, like using a disposable tissue for a doorknob or a handrail or a pen to touch an elevator button. Cough and sneeze into the crook of your arm not into your hand, or use a disposable tissue and discard the tissue. Um, we are reaching out to our community partners. Um, we drafted a letter today to churches, made a video for our website. Um, we have a meeting scheduled with the schools, um, the nursing homes and senior living facilities, um, and are responding to the public as quickly as we possibly can. And if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them for you. Thank Any you. questions? Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Uh, uh, yes, Mr. Chairman. Demetri, I just want to tell everyone that uh, uh, Dr. Page called me this morning, complimented you and your staff for working very well with his staff. And uh, I know, as Joanne said, you've been putting in a lot of, a lot of long hours. Um, you probably d uh, didn't anticipate this back in November. <laughs> But uh, thank you for being here. It's okay. I've been getting ready for this my whole career. That's <laughs> <laughs> true. Okay. Mr. Chairman, I, I would yes. point out if the council is not aware of it, that on our website there are substantial materials about the outbreak, and we will continue to update that, including we'll soon do some reporting on testing. Okay. Uh, the, the testing became available pretty much today um, or hopefully tomorrow. So testing is available, um, and it's been opened up to the private sector um, as of the end of last week. Um, 
I'm anticipating a lot of new test results are this week um, from people being tested around the state. Okay. Yeah, we urge people in the county to uh, to use the website and uh, you know educate themselves uh, as best they can uh, to uh, you know uh, you know prevent the spread of this uh, this you know somewhat frightening uh, uh, virus. All right. Next on the agenda is the is the consent agenda. Do we have motion to approve the consent agenda? Motion approved. Right, first of all, let me ask: Is there any items to be removed from the consent agenda? Okay. So. Second. Okay. All, right. all those in favor of approving the consent agenda, say aye. 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 Opposed. Consent agenda is passed. Okay. All right. Next up is uh, resolution uh, number twenty dash zero one. Resolution 20-01, sponsored by Council as a whole, a resolution authorizing the offering for sale of special obligation refunding bonds of St. Charles County, Missouri. Okay, any questions, Mr. I, I dug into this quite a bit and had a conversation with Bob Snard earlier today, and I just wanted to thank him for his astute watching of interest rates and all his work on this because it should save the taxpayers close to a million dollars. So good job, Bob. All right, any other comment? Okay, let's call the roll. Resolution 20-01, a resolution authorizing the offering for sale of special obligation refunding bonds of St. Charles County, Missouri. Councilmember Cronin? Yes. Councilmember Brazel? Yes. Councilmember Elam? Yes. Councilmember Hollander? Yes. Councilmember Hammond? Yes. Councilmember Schneider? Yes. Councilmember White? Yes. Okay, resolution number 20-01 passes. Next up is bills for final passage, uh, starting with bill number 4820. Bill number 4820, an ordinance approving an intergovernmental agreement with the Missouri Secretary of State for a grant awarded to the Election Authority for an election efficiency grant to assist with election activities, systems and equipment maintenance, voting equipment purchases, maintaining voter lists, and polling place accessibility. Okay. Any questions or comments on bill number 4820? Uh, seeing none, please call the roll. An ordinance approving an intergovernmental agreement with the Missouri Secretary of State for a grant awarded to the Election Authority for an election efficiency grant to assist with election activities, systems and equipment maintenance, voting equipment purchases, maintaining voter lists, and polling place accessibility. Councilmember Brazel? Yes. Councilmember Elam? Yes. Councilmember Hollander? Yes. Councilmember Hammond? Yes. Councilmember Schneider? Yes. Councilmember White? Yes. Councilmember Cronin? Yes. Okay, Bill number 4820 passes. Uh, next bill for final passage is bill number 4821. Bill number 4821, an ordinance authorizing the county executive or his designee to execute a program services contract with the Missouri Department of Health and Senior Services for hepatitis A outbreak reimbursement. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion uh, to amend bill number 4821, replace it with substitute bill 4821. Second. Okay. Uh, all those in favor of the substitute bill, say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, we are now dealing with <coughs> substitute bill 4821. Any questions or comments on the substitute bill? Seeing none, please call the roll. Substitute bill number 4821, an ordinance authorizing the county executive or his designee to execute a program services contract and any ancillary agreements with the Missouri Department of Health and Senior Services for Hepatitis A Outbreak Reimbursement. Councilmember Elam? Yes. Councilmember Hollander? Yes. Councilmember Hammond? Yes. Councilmember Schneider? Yes. Councilmember White? Yes. Councilmember Cronin? Yes. Councilmember Brass? Yes. Okay. Uh, bill number 4821 uh, passes. Next up is bills for introduction, uh, starting with bill number 4822. Bill number 4822, requested by Michael Hurlbert, sponsored by Nancy Schneider, an ordinance affirming the Board of Zoning Adjustments decision on application VAR 20-01. Okay. Mr. Chairman? Yes. I became aware of this about a week and a half ago when I started getting numerous calls from citizens living in the area. Um, I have received probably 30 to 40 phone calls, uh, 20 emails, and other methods of communication. Every one of the people who has contacted me is uh, against this. I think a lot of them believe that, um, that th this um, usage could be totally permitted from the site. Uh, and I've tried to explain to them that what is uh, in effect is a um, 
a request to uh, vary the setback from uh, 35 feet to 10. Now today we hear that they're requesting an amendment to make it 20 feet, and I would suggest that um, since apparently none of the four factors were met uh, with the initial request that they should be required to go back to the Board of, uh, of Zoning to make a request for a 20-foot um, uh, variance as opposed to the 10-foot. The um, I have driven by there numerous times, um, and as well as Mr. Dyer's other uh, location that's down the road, and um, even though it's apparently been cleaned up a little bit over the past weekend, I would say that um, these are eyesores, and they do not make a good impression to people coming in to the north part of St. Charles County. And um, I am not in favor of uh, overruling the decision of the uh, Board of Zoning Adjustment. Okay. Yes. Um, Joe? I would, I would suggest that, or maybe, or John, if, if, if in fact that they're, the, it's already been zoned, so if we do nothing, they're, they can continue with what they're doing. They just want asking for a setback. So if they're asking for the variance and they say if they get a 20 foot setback and they'll go to that, if the neighbor has that, can't we put some of the, they agree that they would not have tractor trailers there and cargo boxes and things like that. And the councilwoman uh, said that thinks that would be reasonable. Um, can we put those restrictions in the, if we give them the variance, can we put those restrictions in with it where they can't have tractor trailers in the front lot, they can't have cargo boxes, and whatever all the other list of things that look so unsightly, and perhaps require them to have an eight foot uh, slat fence, privacy fence to hide the, that way we, because we didn't put that in the, I don't believe we put that in the original zoning, so this gives us the upper hand to actually do something with it where we could put restrictions in it, is that correct? Under the UDO, you can amend the uh, variance. I think it puts us in a better position then that's just my opinion. I, if, if, the, if the petitioner would agree to that, well, I mean, I don't know if it matters if they agree or not, but you said you guys would do that, so it seems like a reasonable uh, exchange for giving them the, uh, the request. Mr. Cronin, I just want folks to realize this is already zoned in heavy industrial, so they can still put this in. The question right. is whether it's gonna be 10 or 20 feet from the roadway or 35 feet. So I would rather see us do something like the suggested compromise that Mr. Dyer and Mr. Wiss came, came up with with 20 feet, which I think that's a good start. But beyond that, every other storage lot that we've ever approved of recent, we've had some type of natural screening, okay? Uh, those white plastic fences are a pain because especially in that area, if it gets any water on it or whatever, then they start molding. But for instance, a berm with white pine trees, okay, which is we've done with a lot of the Keevan storage facilities, okay, doesn't cost a lot for the landowner to make a build, doesn't cost a lot to maintain with trees on it, but yet it prevents folks from seeing that area. So I would say that, you know, I would feel more uh, comfortable with this if with the 20 foot that's been suggested, if that 20 foot also included a, a pretty good site barrier between 94 and the lot. I think that's a good way to have your cake and eat it too because then the, the applicants can still have their storage lot, but the residents and Miss Ohm's concerns about visibility into that site would be pretty much uh, you know, restricted if you have an eight foot tall row of, of, uh, of berm with, with landscaping on it and you limit the back, the front end of the lot to eight foot tall vehicles, you don't see them. That's just my, my, my thinking. Uh, Mr. Holbert, could you come up here? We were uh, discussing uh, at one time, uh, what is the process for changing this from 10 foot setback to 20? I, I know it's been suggested, it sounds like it's a pretty good idea, but can we do that without, you know, What's the process for us to do that? Um, I don't have the exact wording in front of me, but under the UDO, the council may approve, deny, amend, or modify the variance, the appeal okay. uh, based, that comes before you. So if the applicant is offering a different number, then that's something the council has purview over. Okay. Um, it's obviously the, the appeal that the BZA heard uh, the, their request was for a 10-foot setback, right. and that, that 
modification or request was not made at that time, so that that's all they could um, base opinion on. Okay. I have a question. For Anybody you. have any questions? Okay, I'm looking at the site plan they submitted, and I see no vegetative cover at all in the front of that, that property, okay? Every other storage lot we've had, is, they've had to put some type of vegetative, vegetative screening on it. Is we have nothing in the ordinance for a storage lot with a cyclone fence not having to have any landscaping provisions on it? Typically, the, the landscaping is, is along the side and rears to uh, accommodate the neighbors. Mm -hmm. uh, the frontage is uh, for a business to obscure the front as kind of anti-business. Isn't that pretty much what we did with the Kevins, the U-Haul facility those on are, 364? Those are, those are conditional use permits, so it's yeah. That was a CUP and that was offered as part of the, the, the compromise. But we could put some similar conditions on this approval, could we not? Again, the council can amend or modify yeah. as they see fit. Okay. Mr. Chair. Yes. Mr. Mr. Herbert, would the, if there was a berm put in place, would it be past the 20-foot setback or could it be incorporated within the before the 20 foot the, the berm could be placed within the setback with it have to be behind the setback no. it, in the it setback. could be within in the within okay so yeah. that wouldn't take away from their their usage of the property then if they can design it that way okay very good do you uh, mr minor do you guys have a is, are you on this are, do you guys have a problem with doing a berm you get the room right Thanks, Mike. Thank you, Mike. Do you want to come up? You can address the vegetation. Yes. 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 Well, let's as well. we put this. One, uh, one second. This goes here. One second, sir. Okay. Uh, County executive wants to ask Mike one more question. Okay. Then we'll get to you, sir. That you're fine. You're fine. You can stay right there. Don't go away. <laughs> the, uh, they're right next to St. Charles. What, what, what is the St. Charles setback requirement? Oh, do, do you know, Robert? I don't know. The song should. I mean, I, I, I know that the 20-foot setback that exists on the neighboring property, that, that was after they, they annexed after they, they built. So I don't know if that's the, I don't believe that's the city's requirement. Do you, do you know, Robert? I, I called the city, and although we didn't discuss how far the setback had to be, they indicated that you couldn't have storage in a required front yard in the city. So we couldn't do a storage lot within that required front yard, just like St. Charles County. We, so we can, the, we can so get the, that the neighbor is grandfathered in? They have a setback yeah. of about 20 feet yes. in the county. I'm sorry, it's in Central, Central City. city. Yeah, in the okay, city. but even if they had a 20 foot in the city, they wouldn't be able to do what they want to do? Yeah, I'm just bringing this up because that's the other option here, just like we talked a couple of weeks ago. If, if, if they annex into the city and can get what they want, yeah. um, then we might be better off trying to work out a deal that, you know, improve it as much as we can um, and get as big a setback as, as possible. We, we can check it. Could we check find that out? Yeah. Check that out and just see what find out the, here real fast, so. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Go ahead, sir. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. Uh, is this on? Uh, is... There you go. Does that matter? Okay. So in the, in the original drawing that we had for the zoning meeting, I, I believe there was landscaping in a in a line across the front of the fence okay it isn't really realistic for actually for something to look good and besides blocking the view to the back of the property so in this picture here you can see on either flanking either side of our center driveway there a, I don't know if you can zoom in on this or we get an idea uh, it, so there'd be a, my, the intentions are to have planting beds on either side of the driveway set with boulders and bermed with evergreens behind it, flanking on either corners, and then a set throughout the middle here down the line. So it still has a blocking effect to an extent, but it still gives our first responders and police officers an ability to see into that lot for security. Um, and it would fit, and we would put in as many plants in as we need to fill the quota that's required by the county. Any questions? Yeah, Mr. Hammond. Do you, are you proposing uh, gravel or asphalt? The, on the entrance, the entrance is all, is all uh, concrete coming in, all the way back to this, to this back gate point here where before we cross the creek. Okay. okay thank you, sir. Would, would, Can we bring one last? the other gentleman? 
Would it be a would it, would, if we wanted screening along the entire run of, of 94 there? Okay, vegetative screening. How would that be a hardship for you? In 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 in, in some ways, yes, because uh, unless you the county gets us uh, water, uh, we're we're limited on our ability to water plants in, over a long period of a long space like that. I can, I have tanks that'd be easier to to use to to water. Mass plantings, mass plantings, it'd be easier to maintain versus bush after bush after bush, which I know in, from going down 94, Mr. Reams experienced the same problem. Bush after bush, bush dies, bush dies, bush dies. You know, top bush dies, gotta cut it down, you know? So if we can keep these plantings centralized, flanking the gate on the corners and there's something in the middle, uh, it, would, it would break up the, the view a little bit, you know? Um, you know, we already said we wouldn't, not concerned about parking tractor trailers out front. We weren't really throwing uh, containers into that idea because we figured you could put containers across the back row, paint them all one consistent color, and then park vehicles in the front. If the containers are really that big of a sticking point, we can take them out to the back too. But we shouldn't be denied the ability to do what our neighbors are doing and what everybody, you know, other storage units are doing. Just because of a, a, you know, that's not even why we're here. We're here to talk about a 10 foot setback or a 20 foot, 10 to 20 foot setback. Yeah, you know? That's correct. Okay. Did you, want, did you, you said you guys wanted this? We're fine. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Can um, we bring up the other gentleman real quick? Did I understand that? Your frontage is at 20 feet yes. from the road. At that time, I built. When I built, I'm in the city now. But at that time, when I built my property, I was in the county, and I did it whatever county asked. So I was in the county when this was built. And 2003, something like that. But you're you're at 20 feet from 20 the road. 20 feet. That's at, correct. That's your current setback. Yes, sir. Okay. Now, one of the issues I have also is water retention. If fly view, well, you know, we have we could pull up a site view of it. But anyway, there's a creek waterway going between our front parcel and our rear parcel, as long as as well as theirs. Problem is that creek is stressed to its max with all the development that's been going on. The subdivisions are dumping into the creeks. All them all that water on the I guess would be the west side of 94. It comes over underneath Highway 94 into this creek. Okay. My problem would be flooding. Is my property gonna flood on a one inch rain due to all the runoff that's gonna be put into this creek without any kind of maintenance of the creek, any kind of you know, clearing of that creek? When I bought it, I cleared out that creek, dug it eight feet deep, 20 feet wide, so it's got great flow, but then it gets choked right back down to Mr. Dyer's property, which you know, there's concrete laying in the creek, everything you can imagine, and all the way down out to ni North 94, because it dumps into Suntan Beach, if you're familiar with the old Suntan Beach. Okay, so, thank you very thank, much. Thank you, but appreciate it. Mr. Chairman, yes. Can I ask a question? Oh, oh sir, yeah, sir. sir. Got one more question here. Sir, since you brought up the fact that you annexed into, into the city. Yes, because I needed the water and sewer. I think I remember I was sitting in her chair. Okay. I was, 2006. So we Somewhere in that a, neighborhood, yeah. You were given a, uh, a building permit to build a pole barn? Yes, and then we all we ch had it changed. I submitted plans for that for a to put up a stick building then. Okay, but you 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 were approved for, for a pole barn? Correct. And then you went into the city of St. Charles? Correct. I needed the water and sewer, and that's where I couldn't put a septic or leach field under my parking lot, and I was too close to the creek to put did one down. You, did you comply with our uh, with our requirements on that building permit? Ninety percent of them. Ninety percent. Ninety percent of them. Yeah. Well, on the front lot, yes, but on the back lot, we had some issues. Yes. Yeah. Huh? On the front lot, I did. Other than we switched out, we switched out from a pole bar, and we we drew for a stick building. Uh, but like I said, yeah, main, I haven't seen the whole file. I'll, I'll check out the yeah. whole file. But that's what, what we, I saw. Yeah. But the back I lot, we, the back lot, we had some issues. Yes, because I wanted to develop well, that, that's it. Not but really, yeah, that's yeah. Not really there was a parking lot issue that. as far as depth and stuff like that. Yes, and okay. Phil. Do you know what the what the city's setback requirement is? 
I don't because when I did this, I was in the county, so I, I would assume it would have been 20 feet at that time. Okay. I don't know. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Okay. Appreciate could, it. Could yeah, I ask yeah. the Alderwoman a question, too? Yes. And no, I, I didn't study that before coming here. Well, yeah. <laughs> I didn't know about this, and it was barely 24 hours that you, I learned about this issue. Do you know? Do you know what the city setback is? Not for the zoning. Uh, Mr. Category. Holbert has the answer back there. Oh, this just in. <laughs> 25 feet. Oh, it's 25. 25. Okay. Ah. Okay. All right. Am so I released? So you're not as tough as we are, but uh, still tougher than what they want. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, that's good to know. And uh, you mentioned something about about a park. Right. Are you talking about the, the park property across Haunting Road that we no, gave to no, the no. city? Uh, and this is um, along Highway B. You have the Orchard Farm bought the parcel to build a high school. The city has acquired property behind that. Um, kind of uh, parallel with okay. um, the, what is going to be the high school. And so uh, it's around Because the Haunting Road property that we gave to the city. Right. And the city and us. Well, we, we paid $10 for it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you overpaid. Thank you. you, you we did. You got cheated <laughs> with on all the deal. problems. <laughs> and with, then the city and the county, we gave that free to Boeing. Uh, right. Right? Well, gave it to there were some other things involved there, so. Right, but certainly the city Some benefited from things, the relationship like, there. What other things are involved? Thank you. Oh. National defense <laughs> and jobs. Well, you know. Because I just, these people, when you said the park, I, I was thinking that's what they're thinking of. No, no. They're th thinking of the park that we gave, the land we right. gave to the Back city. Right, back in 1998. Right, and there, there was the reverter on it to create it as a park, yeah. and we did explore that. We spent oh, about $150,000, the Parks Department did, in coming up with the development plan. But However, then we gave it to Boeing, and I just want to thank you because that I thought that was very generous, and um, right. you know we were more than happy to uh, relinquish well, we our interest in the property, and we appreciate the fact that you did the same. <laughs> well, we tried to make it a park, but we had issues with um, you know some um, FEMA oh, and uh, Mr. Klinghammer worked for years trying to right, make that, right, make right. it all work. No, Thank but you. but Mr. this proposed oh. park is um, the parcel which is. Uh, abuts onto Mo 94, but it is adjacent to the parcel that the Orchard Farm School District bought for a high school. Gotcha. So you will have more travel on Mo 94, hoping to have maybe some soccer fields there, baseball fields. You'd like to see some tournaments there. So you are going to have a lot of, we hope, um, once it's developed, more people coming from both directions. Um, Great place for a cricket pitch. Just saying. Okay. I'll tell, I'll tell <laughs> Mayor Lee. There you go. Mr. Once again, thank you for your generosity. Yes, appreciate it. Uh, thank you for your generosity. <laughs> Mr. White, do you have a comment? Yes, for the gentleman that was up here, I just wanted a clarification for my own sake. Is his business similar to what this business is going to be? It depends what he's planning on doing. If it's semi-storage, then no. If it's open RV storage, it's exactly what I do. Okay, okay that's fine. Thank you. All right, uh, any other comments? All right, we will move on for uh, the second bill for introduction, which is bill number 4823. Bill number 4823, requested by Steve Elman, sponsored by John White, an ordinance amending sections 120.520, 120.530, 120.540, 120.551, 120.552, 120.553, 120.554, 120.555, 120.556, 120.557, 120.558, 120.559, 120.560, 120.561, 120.562, 120.563, 120.564, 120.565, 120.566, 120.567, 120.568, 120.569, 120.570, 120.571, 120.572, 120.573, 120.574, 120.576, 120.578, 120.579, 120.580, 120.581, 120.582, 120.583, 120.584, 120.585, 120.586, 120.587, 120.588, 120.589, 120.590, 120.591, 120.592, 120.593, 120.594, 120.510, 120.511, 120.512, 120.513, 120.514, 120.515, 120.516, 120.517, 120.518, 120.519, 120.520, 120.521, 120.522, 120.523, 120.524, 120.525, 120.526, 120.527, 120.528, 120.529, 120.530, 120.531, 120.532, 120.533, 120.534, 120.535, 120.536, 120.537, 120.538, 120.539, 120.540, 120.541, 120.542, 120.543, 120.544, 120.545, 120.546, 120.547, 120.548, 120.549, 120.550, 120.551, 120.552, 120.553, 120.554, 120.555, 120.566, 120.577, 120.578, 120.579, 120.580, 120.581, 120.582, 120.583, 120.584, 120.585, 120.596, 120.597, 120.508, 120.509, 120.510, 120.511, 120.512, 120.513, 120.514, 120.515, 120.516, 120.517, 120.518, 120.519, 120.520, 120.521, 120.522, 120.523, 120.524, 120.525, 120.526, 120.527, 120.528, 120.529, 120.530, 120.531, 120.532, 120.533, 120.534, 120.535, 120.536, 120.537, 120.538, 120.539, 120.540, 120.541, 120.542, 120.543, 120.544, 120.545, 120.546, 120.547, 120.548, 120.549, 120.550, 120.551, 120.552, 120.553, 120.554, 120.555, 120.566, 120.577, 120.578, 120.579, 120.580, 120.581, 120.582, 120.583, 120.584, 120.585, 120.596, 120.597, 120.598, 120.599, 120.510, 120.511, 120.512, 120.513, 120.514, 120.515, 120.516, 120.517, 120.518, 120.519, 120.520, 120.521, 120.522, 120.523, 120.524, 120.525, 120.526, 120.527, 120.528, 120.529, 120.530, 120.531, 120.532, 120.533, 120.534, 120.535, 120.536, 120.537, 120.538, 120.539, 120.540, 120.541, 120.542, 120.543, 120.544, 120.545, 120.546, 120.547, 120.548, 120.549, 120.550, 120.551, 120.552, 120.553, 120.554, 120.555, 120.566, 120.577, 120.578, 120.579, 120.580, 120.581, 120.582, 120.583, 120.584, 120.585, 120.596, 120.597, 120.598, 120.599, 120.510, 120.511, 120.512, 120.513, 120.514, 120.515, 120.516, 120.517, 120.518, 120.519, 120.520, 120.521, 120.522, 120.523, 120.524, 120.525, 120.526, 120.527, 120.528, 120.529, 120.530, 120.531, 120.532, 120.533, 120.534, 120.535, 120.536, 120.537, 120.538, 120.539, 120.540, 120.541, 120.542, 120.543, 120.544, 120.545, 120.546, 120.547, 120.548, 120.549, 120.550, 120.551, 120.552, 120.553, 120.554, 120.555, 120.566, 120.577, 120.578, 120.579, 120.580, 120.581, 120.582, 120.583, 120.584, 120.585, 120.596, 120.597, 120.598, 120.599, 120.510, 120.511, 120.512, 120.513, 120.514, 120.515, 120.516, 120.517, 120.518, 120.519, 120.520, 120.521, 120.522, 120.523, 120.524, 120.525, 120.526, 120.527, 120.528, 120.529, 120.530, 120.531, 120.532, 120.533, 120.534, 120.535, 120.536, 120.537, 120.538, 120.539, 120.540, 120.541, 120.542, 120.543, 120.544, 120.545, 120.546, 120.547, 120.548, 120.549, 120.550, 120.551, 120.552, 120.553, 120.554, 120.555, 120.566, 120.577, 120.578, 120.579, 120.580, 120.581, 120.582, 120.583, 120.584, 120.585, 120.596, 120.597, 120.598, 120.599, 120.510, 120.511, 120.512, 120.513, 120.514, 120.515, 120.516, 120.517, 120.518, 120.519, 120.520, 120.521, 120.522, 120.523, 120.524, 120.525, 120.526, 120.527, 120.528, 120.529, 120.530, 120.531, 120.532, 120.533, 120.534, 120.535, 120.536, 120.537, 120.538, 120.539, 120.540, 120.541, 120.542, 120.543, 120.544, 120.545, 120.546, 120.547, 120.548, 120.549, 120.550, 120.551, 120.552, 120.553, 120.554, 120.555, 120.566, 120.577, 120.578, 120.579, 120.580, 120.581, 120.582, 120.583, 120.584, 120.585, 120.596, 120.597, 120.598, 120.599, 120.510, 120.511, 120.512, 120.513, 120.514, 120.515, 120.516, 120.517, 120.518, 120.519, 120.520, 120.521, 120.522, 120.523, 120.524, 120.525, 120.526, 120.527, 120.528, 120.529, 120.530, 120.531, 120.532, 120.533, 120.534, 120.535, 120.536, 120.537, 120.538, 120.539, 120.540, 120.541, 120.542, 120.543, 120.544, 120.545, 120.546, 120.547, 120.548, 120.549, 120.550, 120.551, 120.552, 120.553, 120.554, 120.555, 120.566, 120.577, 120.578, 120.579, 120.580, 120.581, 120.582, 120.583, 120.584, 120.585, 120.596, 120.597, 120.598, 120.599, 120.510, 120
Okay, seeing none, we will move on to bill number 4825 for introduction. Bill number 4825 requested by Bob Schnur, sponsored by council as a whole, an ordinance authorizing the non-binding projected tax rates of the county for the general revenue fund and for various special funds of and for the county of St. Charles, Missouri for the year 2020 in order to develop the notice of projected tax liability to accompany the assessor's notice of assessed value, all as mandated by Senate Bill 711, 2008. Questions or comments on this bill? Seeing none, we move on to bill number 4826. And this bill is under oh. three pages, so I will read it in its entirety. Okay. Bill number 4826, <laughs> requested by Steve Elman, sponsored by Terry Hollander, an ordinance authorizing the county executive or his designee to execute a building lease agreement with the city of Wentzville, Missouri for a portion of the premises located at 1605 Wentzville Parkway. Whereas the city of Wentzville, Missouri and St. Charles County, Missouri have agreed to enter into a building lease agreement for a portion of the premises located at 1605 Wentzville Parkway, which is the former location of the St. Charles County Department of Emergency Communications Dispatch and Alarm. And whereas the building lease agreement between the parties outlines the duties of the city of Wentzville, Missouri and St. Charles County, Missouri. And whereas it is in the public interest for St. Charles County to participate in the building lease agreement with the city of Wentzville as it will benefit the residents of St. Charles County. And whereas Chapter 70, Revised Statutes of Missouri, authorizes intergovernmental agreements between political subdivisions for the purposes herein set out. Now therefore be it ordained by the County Council of St. Charles County, Missouri as follows. Section one, the County Executive or his designee is hereby authorized to execute the building lease agreement with the City of Wentzville, Missouri related to a portion of the premises located at 1605 Wentzville Parkway in Wentzville, Missouri. Section two, the building lease agreement shall be substantially the same in form and content as that attached here to as exhibit A. Section three, compliance with all the terms of the building lease agreement shall be the responsibility of the St. Charles County Executive's Office. Section four, this ordinance shall be in full force and effect from and after the date of its passage and approval. Thank you. Uh, is there any, any discussion on this particular bill? Okay, seeing none, we move on to uh, bill number 4827 for introduction. Bill number 4827, requested by Joe Cronin, sponsored by Joe Cronin, Joe Brazel, and Dave Hammond. An ordinance amending sections 410-070-410.100, 410 410.350, 410.370, 410.390, 410 410.320, and 425.020 for, of the Ordinances of St. Charles County, Missouri, OSCCMO, and adding a new section 410 .105 to the ordinances of St. Charles County, Missouri to create a new category of minor subdivisions and provide specific minor subdivision regulations governing said minor subdivisions. Okay, Mr. Cronin, you know you've been working on this? Yeah, this has kind of been a problem the last nine years I've been on the council and it's been a struggle to try to figure out how to fix it. And essentially, uh, three different people have contacted me recently that um, in rural areas wanting to build homes and encountering um, regulations and rules that really add substantially to the cost. One of them was Mr. Burris that was, that was here tonight. Um, in a lot of the rural areas of the county, uh, people um, own lands for generations and it's pretty common for a young man like Mr. Burris to grow up in a community and want to want to build something on his family's land. And if we, right now we're holding them to the same exact standards as we would a developer that's developing a three acre subdivision. And we know three acre subdivisions are a little bit of contentious. And this, I, this bill basically has, to, I have two uh, missions to accomplish. One is to make sure that, uh, that families are able to sell lots to uh, family members or other friends or relatives with a minimal amount of cost to them in developing a five acre track with private roads. Um, most of these, uh, as the one mentioned, man, uh, Mr. Burris mentioned on um, uh, Framuth Road as an example, there's 20 plus gravel lanes going to that uh, county road from small developments like this. And the second reason I did it is, well, we all talk about wanting to rather have five acre lots developments instead of three acre lots. Currently we have no incentive for that. So this would substantially lessen the development costs for a five acre lot development. So basically it eliminates the, most of the platting requirements, a lot of the engineering fees, a lot of the fees that were paid to county, uh, a lot of the requirements to go to planning and zoning commission. 
and um, no, most importantly, the road requirements, okay, for the private roads within the little, the, the small developments like that. So that being said, I'd like to thank Michael Herbert. He worked with us pretty good. I worked trying to get this done, and Dave Hammonds had some expertise from being the former community development uh, director. And we've got some, some changes to this, but the biggest point of the whole bill is this. We want young men like Mr. Burris back there to be able to build his home for his family. And by doing this, uh, I think we'll be able to get it done. If we didn't do this, I don't think Mr. Burris was in a position to build that house. So that's the end result that we're after. Thank you. Any other questions, comments? I would just suggest that um, if everybody who has an interest in this take a look at it and see, make sure that we're not missing anything because we think that this covers it pretty well, um, that uh, it, it doesn't burden people with over-regulations, and that's what we're trying to do. So. Mr. Hammond? Yeah, I, I tried to address this, I think, some time back when there was another development and uh, dealing with the cost involved in, in trying to get a gravel road approved. I mean, you had to hire an engineer and spend thousands of dollars <clears throat> to uh, engineer a small gravel road that was gonna serve some small parcels. And I mean, these are five acre parcels, which aren't that small, but to have to spend all that money on engineering just for a road is, uh, as far as I'm concerned, is ridiculous. Uh, when you can spend that money throughout the years to maintain it once you, once you got the mm -hmm. gravel road. So I support this bill. Any other questions or comments? Okay. Uh, next up would be uh, bills to be brought off the table. Uh, Mr. I, yes. yeah, I'd like to have uh, Bill 40, I'm asking for a motion to have 4799 removed off the table. Uh, I think 4798 also? Or just well, but do it on one at a time or two at a time? Yeah, I just, we can do, yeah, we do one at a time. Yeah, okay. that's right. Okay, do I have a second? Second. Okay. I'm sorry, he said 4799. You want 98. 4798, right? It says 4799 yeah, on there. Well, oh, 4798. I'm sorry, there's three of them. Yeah, I thought there was three. Oh, okay. 40, uh, motion to remove 4798 off the table. Second. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Uh, I, I guess we need a concurrence of three because this bill has been withdrawn. So we need to, I'm, since I'm the sponsor, I'm going to make a motion to withdraw the bill. Okay. I, 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 concur. Just, I concur. I concur. I concur. I concur. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, yep. I'd like to make a motion to have 4799 removed from the uh, table. Second. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 I'd like to, like to make a motion to have this bill removed, okay. withdrawn from the, from the agenda. I, can, I, concur. I concur. I concur. I concur. All right. Okay. And last of all. And then the last, uh, make a motion to have 4800 removed. From uh, withdrawn from the from the agenda. Second. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed. Okay. And a motion to withdraw. Withdraw. Yeah. I, I concur. I concur. I concur. <laughs> I concur. Okay. Right. Now this was the uh, the the four style lots. They were trying to get three acre zoning, and and uh, they decided to back it off. Um, that 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 particular subdivision is farther out in the country, and and has really no chance of having any kind of um, infrastructure. And so it was a good decision for them to withdraw that bill. And then I move on to um, the next one, which is um, the f uh, 4815. Which one is it? Bill 4815. I have to I'd like to have 4815 removed from the table. Second. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. This is uh, the, the gentleman, the, uh, Brad and Dale and and uh, Bill, do what, what do you want me to do? Make a motion to amend bill number 4815 as follows. Um, I didn't do the highlighted areas, here we go. Go ahead, Mike. So we're striking. Uh, a simple majority of the county council is required for the passage of this bill. Uh, and we're replacing with over 30% of the owners of real property within 1,000 feet of the parcel of land for which the revision is being proposed have submitted a written protest, legal remonstrance against the proposed subject rezoning <laughs> action pursuant to section 405.535.B.3 of the Ordinance of St. Charles County, Missouri, 
OSCCMO, therefore a supermajority vote of five of the total seven council members is required to pass this bill. Thank you, sir. Okay. Second. Second. Okay. Someone All, second yeah, it? We already did that. Oh. I already. made the motion you do it. Oh, second. Second. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, we are now dealing with the amended bill number 4815, which basically requires uh, five votes for passage rather than the customary four. Okay, uh, Michael, uh, you want to come up and go over that, what we uh, talked about, the master plan and, and where it is and everything? <clears throat> this is going to mirror a little bit of what the applicant spoke of during the public comment, but I think it's, uh, it's worth talking about again. So this is the area, uh, the beige area is the rural residential area of the master plan land use plan for 2030. And um, this came out of discussions with the master plan uh, steering committee, as well as with planning and zoning and the county council um, and the county executive. Um, the area was denoted because of a preponderance of three acre residential development that was existing as well as a study of the topographic conditions, soil conditions, watershed, um, among other uh, information. And so that line, if you will, was, was drawn based on that information. Um, the plan uh, um, was revised um, uh, several times throughout the course with uh, input from various people, uh, including the, the council and the executive. Um, and so the the final plan that we see here is what the, was drawn up for the rural residential area for three acre lots. North of that line is the yellow area here. That is the four, up to four lots per acre density. Uh, and so that is right on the Minersagen line, basically, through, through that area. Uh, Minersagen is the northern limits of the rural residential area denoted in the, in the master plan. Uh, north of that is the, the much denser uh, plan for development. Um, step back a bit. A bit. I, there was a question about the 2030 plan, the name on it. And so I wanted to kind of briefly touch on that. Envision 2030 is the end game. It's what was envisioned to be what the development of the county would look like in 2030. It does not mean that the decisions should not be made until 2030. These are four decisions to be made now with the planned uh, development of the county to be what it looks like in 2030. Just so uh, everybody knows, Mike went over the previous years and, um, and the previous plans that were submitted uh, with the master plan committee. Like I, I said before, there were 17 uh, people on that committee that they review this and they come up with, they mutually agree, then they present to the council. Um, the, the, um, I, w I wanted the five acre line. It first started way down the five acre line. And after, after, I think there were three changes, uh, the county executive, uh, we had some, uh, talks and negotiations along with the council. So I, I got the, the, the five acre line pushed as far north as I could. But you got to remember, you, you're trying to do what's best for your area. But then there's other people making decisions that you're going to lose, you lose your vote or you lose your negotiation authority if you're not if you're not going to be somewhat reasonable. Um, in this particular instance, um, the uh, the argument is 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 this particular piece is is 0.75 miles from Highway N, which does have significant infrastructure in that metropolitan area. When you're out in Augusta and New Melly and the other small communities, they don't have infrastructure. They have sewage treatment plants and they dump in the Missouri River and they dump into New Melly lakes. And so it's uh, problematic when they have growth of any kind of uh, nature, um, f you know, four homes per acre. Um, when M Mr. McNair called me, I, I told him that I, I think that it's a reasonable request simply because it's, um, 
in that buffer zone where it is going to stop Winsville. If you throw up three acre subdivisions there, it's going to be better than four homes per acre and it's going to stop the growth from coming through. But I also told him that my job is not necessarily my opinion, it's, it's I'm, I'm hired to represent the people in my area. Um, I also stated that it's, it's, it's not an unreasonable request, but I can't support it because I have, to, I have to represent the people in my area. But in fairness to him, he did do what was asked of him, and, um, but I, I can't support it, but I'm not saying it's a towing cost. It's one of those things that I have to re represent the people in my area, but it's not an unreasonable request. So. Um, when it's set def definitely in the five acre green, we're going to stick to the five acre to the best of my ability. I'll fight that tooth and nail. But when it clearly says three acres um, and it's on the line of the four homes per acre, it's a hard argument for you to make. But I'm going to I'm going to stick with my constituents on it. But it's still a hard argument to make. Mr. Crone, this one's been a really tough one. I'll just be frank with you. Um, I understand the importance of five acre developments versus three. That's why I worked on that bill that's so hard for the St. Paul area. But the same token, I do understand the, the, you know, the growth and what's, what Wentzville's doing because the better part of Wentzville's in my district. I made a call into Ducker Creek Sewer District just to find out what their plans were in that area and was told that they planned on having a sewer plant in that area of two or three years in expansion. I looked at the older um, five year to 2025 master plan and it already showing water and sewer um, uh, 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 service to that area. So at the previous meetings, I, I did ask res residents that were opposed to this, be careful what you ask for. And I still think that's a relevant um, uh, question because I think there's a very strong possibility due to the fact this thing's only three quarter mile from a highway in, water and sewer are coming, that instead of having on that 90 acres, instead of having 30 uh, pretty high end homes, you could have uh, 360 typical small Winsville homes. And I'm not saying those small Winsville homes are bad because my son actually lives in one of them, those small and growing subdivisions of Winsville. But the same token, in order to protect that area the best, I think we've got to approve this. And that's my opinion just based on the fact that I think there's a real strong possibility that, that Winsville will be coming in the area. I know a lot of concern from Ms. Molitor Freeze about runoff. Uh, I looked at the topographical maps and the, the, the land is that, gently that's, sloped. That's forced out road, though. That's not this I'm one. sorry, yeah. I'm, I'm confusing the issues. Yeah. And it, basically, the ground is pretty, uh, uh, the slopes aren't too ex extensive on it. So, that being said, uh, you know, I, I think this is probably the best thing for that area long term. Yeah, it's, you know, it's my belief, you know, we, we've dealt with this five acre lot versus three acre lot so many times I can't even remember. And I, I knew that, you know, we, we worked hard on trying to establish a line. Obviously, uh, Mr. Brazel, you know, worked very diligently on trying to say, let's in the future, let's have a line. So uh, in my opinion, this, this, you know, the line has been drawn, uh, whereas this allows three acre uh, lots. And uh, I think uh, after you know a, a lot of discussion uh, over the years, I think uh, I think we should at least here you know stick with what we've pretty much agreed on, and that is you know the three acre lots or or an appropriate usage for this particular area. Can I say something real quick? Yes. So Mike Klinghammer and I were the two representatives from the council when we went through this uh, version of this, and. It was a lot of back and forth when this was being drawn, and it was redrawn a number of times. But this was the conclusion that we ended up with after a lot of back and forth with it. And in my opinion, if we're going to draw the line like that, that's, that's about as far north of that three-acre line as you're possibly going to get. And if we're not going to allow that there, where are we going to allow three-acre subdivisions? If that's our plan, we've agreed that that's our plan, I think we need to stick to our plan. And I don't think, like Mike said, in 2029, all of a sudden we started saying we're going to adhere to the 2030 plan. I think this is fair. I think this makes perfect use of the plan that we laid out. And if we're not going to stick with the master plan, I don't see much reason of having a master plan. And I think this definitely fits in with that. And I know uh, we spent a lot of time going back and forth with it. And I was one of the people who made the recommendation that this should be a three acre subdivision on behalf of the council. So 
I think this makes perfect sense to be able to put a three acre subdivision there. Any other comments? Okay, please call the roll just to remind you that the, uh, because of the amended bill that will require five votes for passage. Amended bill number 4815, an ordinance amending the zoning district map of the County of St. Charles, Missouri by rezoning land from A, agricultural district to RR, single family residential <coughs> district as per application RZ19-16. Councilmember Hollander? Yes. Councilmember Hammond? Yes. Councilmember Schneider? Yes. Councilmember White? Yes. Councilmember Cronin? Yes. Councilmember Brazel? No. Councilmember Elam? Yes. Okay. Uh, bill number 4815 passes. Uh, do we have uh, any other bills to be removed from the table? I would like to just make an announcement that on the uh, Missouri American Water um, on the water tower, we agreed to leave that on the table, but we are going to vote on that on March 30th. So one way or another, we will pull that off of the table at the next meeting, but that is in three weeks, just so everybody knows. It's not the fourth week this month. We have five Mondays, five Mondays this time, so our meeting will be in three weeks from now. And God willing, Renee, um, we're going to have a meeting with the folks of the area between now and then. So uh, I'm counting on you. I know Zumwalt's on spring break, and I'm hoping Dr. Debray finds us a room uh, and, and we can get folks together and talk. So wear your mask, wear your, uh, you know, get all washed up, wash your hands three or four times, and then come and sneeze in the corner of your arm. <laughs> okay. Thanks. Any other uh, announcements? Miscellaneous. Seeing none. Motion to adjourn. Second. Approved. Thank you, folks.